Hello and welcome. Let's talk about gaming mice and the end game. If you are a gamer like me and you play games that require lightning fast movements and instant reaction times, then the search for the latest and the greatest gaming mouse might make sense, right? Because surely the end game is out there somewhere. Welcome to Stupid Bullets Tech. If you have a good disposable income, you can afford to buy mouse after mouse. You can team them up with multiple artisan pads for that ultra microsecond combination that the rest of the mortals don't have. You can buy lighter shells, faster feet, you can learn to paracord, and you can spend hours on aim trainers and yet somehow still get your ass kicked by a nine-year-old with a broken controller because, shocker, you're not Shroud. Shroud, if you're watching. Now, that is not to say that looking for a great new mouse is a waste of time. Improvements get made constantly, materials become lighter, and technology is always moving forward. And I think we should explore new options to make us better gamers because winning is fun. Ah! And trying new things only adds to this. Plus, as we improve, we can better utilize those small advantages. So shopping for that end game mouse makes sense. And I need you to hit the sub button because I have a new mouse video coming out next week and I want you to see it. What if you're a gamer that needs a really solid performer? A mouse with impeccable build quality, one that lasts for a while because your budget doesn't allow a new mouse every week. Something wireless maybe? Enter the Rocket Kane 200 and 202. Rocket is a German peripherals company that has a passion for engineering as they have redesigned almost every aspect of these mice. They are rock solid and one has been on my desk ever since I discovered them. First, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This mouse weighs 105 grams. For the sake of scale, a nickel weighs 5 grams. But remember, one of the best-selling wireless gaming mice in history and still a really good performer is the Logitech G502 Lightspeed. And you will find serious gamers who refuse to use anything else and it weighs 116 grams with the weights removed and costs 120 to $150 while the last three Rocket 202s I've bought were $69.99. They do fluctuate on Amazon from $69 to $99. Oddly enough, as I was checking prices while writing my bullets points for this review, Amazon had them at $62.99, which is amazing. So I got another one, which I will use for a giveaway. I think that's number four. If you'd like to be notified of when that giveaway is, comment below. They also offer a budget wired alternative, the Rocket 102, at under $50. The 200 and 202 are Ergo mice. The 200 is the black version, the 202 is the white version, my personal favorite. And have specs that come in at 124 millimeters long, 65 wide, and 43 tall. The size, weight, and shape of these mice is very neutral, meaning they are going to fit a lot of hands really well. In addition, they are easily adaptable to grip styles from fingertip to claw. They have a hybrid, soft-feeling coating that cleans up easily and offers decent grip. I do plan on modding one of these in the future for even better grip, as well as a possible shell swap, so look for those videos soon. The mouse 1 and 2 clicks are simply some of the best in the business. Split and separate from the rest of the mouse, there is absolutely no pre-travel and almost no post. In fact, it is so instant that it took me a bit to get used to. Rocket calls these Titan switches, and I will link to a video below that shows some of the tech they use to create such an accurate click. Switches are 50M Omrons and should last longer than you. The Titan wheel gets the same redesign treatment. And while a little stiffer than I would like, the switch is directly below the wheel and centered, which offers accurate movement. The scroll wheel also feels very good and is easily gripped and is pleasantly quieter than most. Side buttons are big and right where they're supposed to be. 
They stick out from the body in just the right amount for me, and I never had a problem with finding or activating them. If you have ever used a mouse with flush side buttons, you will know what I mean. They also have a little pre-travel and minimal post, and they are very solid and very light to use. They too are noticeably quiet. At first, I thought that the DPI button on the top was a little overkill. It's big and square, but I realized later in the software that it had a distinct advantage for me. And I'm okay with the metal stripe down the center. Kind of reminds me of a classic race car, but a smaller, less in-your-face DPI button would have been just fine. And certainly DPI does not need to be printed, as it just takes away from a very clean aesthetic. RGB lighting is there if you care about that, and shines through the logo on the rear, as well as the sides of the scroll wheel. While fairly standard, it is minimal and well done, which I appreciate, as well as offering a battery indicator mode. The mouse on the bottom houses the Pixar PMW3335, which Rocket calls an owl eye sensor. It's 16,000 DPI, has an adjustable lift off and a 1,000 hertz polling rate. Also on the bottom is a pairing button, although mine was plug and play, and an on off button, which could be used while storing the mouse. The mouse feet are fairly average, and I hope to see a better, more improved version at some point. You can swap these out easily enough if more slide is your thing, and I will be including core pads in my next mod video on this mouse. The front of the mouse has a charging port that can also be used for wired play, and while not USB-C, I have no issue with it as I use the excellent dongle that's included anyways. There is no need to do a flex test on this mouse. It is built like a brick. You cannot make this mouse squeak or creak in normal use. Other notable items are a 1000 milliamp lithium ion battery, which when paired with the RGB, showing battery life instead of just flashing gave me days and days of use, as well as a visual reminder of when I should charge it. I'm old, I forget this stuff. I think you could probably save a few grams or so by swapping to a 500 milliamp version if weight was really important. If anyone has done that, let me know in the comments below, please. The 2.4 Hertz connection was flawless and the 512 kilobyte onboard memory is a bonus. The Rocket software is called Swarm. I don't know why. And like the rest of the products, it is clean, well thought out and intuitive, if not exhaustive. After getting it installed and updated, you are greeted with a pin section, which defaults to the DPI switcher, Windows pointer speed, illumination options, as well as game profiles in a macro manager, which offers tons of game options, as well as the ability to customize them any way that you want. I will need to spend some time with this to fully utilize it as the options are endless. In button assignments, you can change most anything to whatever you like. For me, I use that big DPI button as my plates in Warzone. If you have a rocket keyboard with easy shift, you can program a secondary function to each button as well. RGB illumination is pretty simple with wave, fully lit, heartbeat, breathing, blinking, and the battery indicator, which is a no-brainer to avoid uninterrupted gameplay. There's also an AMO setting which syncs lights across other devices like Rocket keyboards, but I have not tested that. Rocket just needs to send me a keyboard and we'll make that happen. Advanced button settings takes you to wireless settings like signal strength and gives you the ability to turn off the illumination and save battery life. Polling rates are pretty standard from 125 to 1000, angle snapping should be off for gaming, and on for some production work. Sound feedback would be a personal preference, debounce, which I have never had to use, lift off distance, and a reset button if you screw it all up and need to start over. In addition, any commonly used sections can be added to the pin section. There is an undo option and even an explanation function that does a pretty good job of explaining what each choice is and what it does. In the settings section, you have an auto update option as well as language choices from English to Vietnamese, which really shows the huge reach of Rocket. This global reach was increased in 2019 when the company was acquired by Turtle Beach for over $19 million. With Turtle Beach's massive bank revenue and Rocket's design philosophy, I expect to see some cutting edge peripherals in the years to come, if Turtle Beach lets Rocket do its thing that is. In summary, you can tell I am a fan. I have purchased almost a dozen Rocket products and have yet to have a bad experience. Unless you are a gamer that demands the absolute lightest of mice, which means you probably use a corded mouse anyway, 
The 202 offers up a solid choice in a wireless option, especially if you can catch it on sale. I can't imagine you being disappointed. If you do want a very lightweight option, I have a review on a Rocket Burst Pro in the works. And remember, comment below if you want to know about the next time I give these away, along with our regular giveaways on Twitch and Twitter, which are linked below. And until next time, be good to yourselves.